So, the other day, I was tweeting back and forth with Chrono Hero, who is a fellow Sonic fan on Twitter, and the reason I was tweeting back and forth with him was because he had posted something that everybody else tweeted back to him about too, at least responded. And that was the last page, um, I think that had about four or five, six panels in it, of Archie Sonic issue 212, which served as the epilogue to the entire Iron Dominion arc, which ran from 201 to 211, you know, initially. Uh, along with a few Journey to the East four-part issues in Sonic Universe. Now, with that said, uh, Chrono Hero admitted that when he first saw that image, he was kind of jumping for joy, you know, when he first saw it, basically when it first came out. Uh, and of course, he was younger then, like a lot of us were, but he, that he was jumping for joy at the fact that the romance that had been developed for Sally and Monkey Con, who also, you know, revealed his real name to be Ken Con, um, had pretty much come to an end. And the reason being is because, well, Sally basically admitted, as you see in the panel, that she still has a lot to make up for and, you know, make, and, you know, correct, you know, you know, atone for, basically. And, of course, the one thing they both agreed on, which was the biggest, you know, thing she had to make up for and atone for, was Sonic. And the fact that she admitted she has to find out whether or not there's still something there that she could salvage and rebuild from. Basically admitting that she's still in love with Sonic, but... You know, now she has to figure out, okay, how do I kind of, you know, ignite that fire again that we once had, this time do it the right way, do it the more appropriate way. And, you know, again, Chrono Hero admitted when he first saw this scene, you know, he was jumping for joy. Now, looking back on it, though, he could admit that was kind of wrong of him to do because, you know, you know I think one person... Commented, commented to him in a, in a reply tweet of, man, what a way to get dumped, you know, what a way to get dumped. And the reason somebody brought, the, brought it up in a reply like that is basically because of the fact that in the page that preceded this, they do finally kiss on the lips. And Monkey Con is offering her the opportunity to stay in the Dragon Kingdom and to show her the world basically show her a world outside, you know, of New Mobotropolis, you know, outside of the war that they're currently in with Eggman. And it's then after that, that she kind of acknowledges that as tempting as the offer is, she has to go back. She has to, you know, as like I said, she admits she has to atone for things that she did wrong and, of course, the biggest atonement was making things up with Sonic and seeing if there's something still left there between them. And the biggest revelation that Chrono Hero brought up to me when we were going back and forth on Twitter was something that I completely, you know, forgot about. Because I know he mentioned it, I think, at his Bumble King forums when they were up. But Ian Flynn actually put the future, the fate of Sally's romance in our hands. Yeah. It was at his Bumble King forms, and he basically gave us the power to vote either she goes with Monkey Con or she goes with Sonic. And of course, excuse me there, of course, the majority of the vote went in favor of Sonic, which I don't think anybody could, you know, really blame the fans for, because... When they saw this romance with Monkey Con and Sally start to develop, midway through the Iron Dominion arc, it was like basically, where did this come from? It's like, yeah, she was starting to develop some respect for the guy and even some admiration and a bit of a friendship, if you will. But it's like, where did the sudden like, romance come from, you know, out of nowhere? It's like, where did the sudden romance come from? It's like, it just... You know, it's just like, whoa, you know, what's going on here, right? Anyway, anyway, Ian Flynn, like I said, basically put the power in the fans' hands. And as I mentioned, they unanimously said, screw Monkey Con, go with Sonic, because that should have never been broken up in the first place. Which, you know, they have a right to, you know, pretty much uh, 
you know, be, you know, you know, basically be all for, you know, getting those two back together. And by giving us that power, you know, that indeed happened. And the way he went about it, as I've mentioned before, is actually pretty good. And others have mentioned it before as well. I mean, even Ian Flynn himself, in a recent Bumblecast he did around Valentine's Day, talking about shipping, he basically answered the question by saying that he knew he had to fix this, that that was going to be a priority of his. He was going to fix it, and he had to take, you know, the natural steps to do it. Like, the first step, you know, rebuild the friendship between them, and that's what he did. You know, and you started seeing hints of that even during his first issue and onwards. And then, of course, as we got towards 200 and everything, you started to see a little bit more hints that maybe something more was going to develop again. But then we got, you know, you know, the post-200 Iron Dominion situation where the Monkey Con Sally thing happened. And, you know, they just, you know, went from there, you know, and lo and behold, 212, you know, much to everybody's, you know, I guess you could say relief, you know, Monkey Con and Sally's relationship, the little romance they had, was only for that arc. And I've mentioned this many times before when talking about this, and I mentioned it in the reply to, um, to Chrono Hero. I said basically that this story arc, that this romance is very reminiscent of romances that you see that are meant for story arcs or movies only. Like, they're basically known as one-shot romances, and that's it. One-shot, one-and-done romances that basically, you know, may hint at something happening, but inevitably, inevitably go nowhere, because they're only meant for that, you know, story, that continuity, if you will. And honestly, that's how I viewed this one, because I even mentioned to him you know, the one thing it reminded me of the most when it came to it, like I've mentioned many times before, Zach Morris's romance in the Saved by the Bell Hawaiian style movie. You know, it's like, okay, he's falling for this older girl who, who's a mom and everything, and she's falling for him. You know, and they do part ways. They do part ways. But they do make a promise that if he comes, if he gets out of high school... And he still wants to be with her, you know, that, you know, will that happen? And she says, basically, then you better get your butt back here. And that's it. You know, nothing else. They end on good terms with, you know, a hint, you know, maybe that they might get back together again, which never did, you know, never did happen. And again, it's all because that one shot romance in the movie was meant for the movie only. The same with Zach Morris's you know, basically his stalwart, you know, default love interest, Kelly Kapowski. You know, Kelly was put in a similar situation to where she had a one-shot romance with a character that has the same name as I did, or I do, I should say, uh, Brian. But it turns out that that Brian in the movie was a scumbag. He was a low-life, double-crossing scumbag who, you know, Kelly's grandpa thought was a good friend, but turned out to be nothing more than a low-life. And yes, Kelly did have a brief one-shot romance with him before that dissolved when she pretty much discovered the truth that, you know, hey, he basically duped everybody into thinking he was on their side, you know, and that was it. You know, that was it. But still, it was only a one-shot romance, like I said, just like with Zach's, that was only meant for the film, and that was all. That was all. So... You know, when you, so when you really look at the comparisons to, you know, this situation with Monkey Con and Sally, you know, I, here's the thing, even though I forgot about it, because I, because, you know, once he brought, once Chrono Hero brought it up, it did ring a bell, you know, to coin a phrase, it did ring a bell for me, but honestly, you know, honestly, I, I, I completely forgot about it, and I always looked at the fact that even from when I first read this story arc, that this romance was only for this arc, and that was it. You know, that was it. Because here's the thing, if Ian Flynn wanted to go in the direction that fans, you know, basically voted against, it's like, what sense would that make? 
what sense would that make for him to do? Uh, what, free up, you know, the entire, you know, cast to have more, you know, more spotlight on the other characters? Maybe, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, honestly, Ian Flynn, this is my opinion, I think Ian Flynn was going to go the Sonic Sally direction anyway, no matter, you know, whether or not he put a vote up or not. And I think he, and I think, honestly, the reason he put a vote up is because he wanted to basically, he, he basically wanted to tease the fans. It's like, even if he didn't do it, he was going to probably go in this direction anyway where they, we, you know, where they would part Sally and Khan on good terms. You know, you know, with the hint that if, hey, things don't work out, you know, this time around, you know, that they could get back together. You know, basically things with her and Sonic, that, you know, those two could get back together. So, you know, so, yeah, I, I honestly think he still would have done it anyway, but he only did the voting, you know, like, hey, guys, it's your decision. You make the call. He only did it because he was teasing fans. He wanted to see what the reaction would be. And as much as we hate to say it, that's what a lot of entertainment genres are. A lot of people that work in the, you know, a lot of people that work in the entertainment genre of any kind are paid to do. They are paid to get a reaction. They are paid to get a reaction out of folks. And if part of Ian's job was to get a reaction out of people by saying, hey, let's see if I put, you know, let's see what they do if I say, hey, it's in you know, your hands to vote on Sally's romance future, even though I'm pretty much going to go in the direction I know they're going to go in. You know, if, you, know, if, you know, if that's his job to do it, he's going to do it. You know, despite the fact that he knows where, what direction fans are going to lean in. But long story short, long story short, the truth is, you know, Ian, the truth is, you know, when you look back at, you know, this romance that occurred in Iron Dominion and, you know, broke off in good terms, again, when you look at it, Everyone can agree that it was nothing more than a, you know, a one-shot deal. That, yes, it was cute and adorable for, you know, t testing the waters and everything, but that, obviously, it was not meant to be. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, Sally basically realized that what she saw in Monkey Kong was pretty much the same thing she saw in Sonic. You know, what made her fall for Monkey Kong is what made her fall for Sonic, which is why she told him, look, I still have work to do. I still have to atone for what I've done. And yes, I'm sure a lot of people like Chrono Hero, you know, probably jumped for joy and everything. They probably jumped for joy and all that when this moment happened, or at least got excited in some ways, knowing that, hey, we're going to get these two primary lovers, Sonic and Sally, back together. I'm sure they, like Chrono Hero, were happy to see it, much to the dismay or bittersweetness of, hey, the r romance that was Khan and Sally in the Iron Dominion one, that, you know, that's history. That's done. That's done. That's one and gone. So, you know, so honestly, you know, so honestly, it's, you know, it's just one of those uh, situations that, you know, when you look back on it, you shouldn't be surprised. You shouldn't really be surprised of the direction you know, it went that this romance, this one shot romance uh, went and that was a notification of God. I do apologize, but it shouldn't shock you the uh, direction that this, you know, one shot ro romance ended up in. It shouldn't because that's obviously what it was played up to be a one shot romance, not meant to be anything else than what it was. And that's it. No matter how many, no matter how much people may want to spin it. Or say, you know, it was wrong for them to have Sally kind of string Monkey Con along like that. We all knew, you know, we all knew the direction this was heading. No matter how much you want to deny it. If you do. And again, I think Ian Flynn knew it as well. That's, and again, like I said, his job in the entertainment business, just like anybody in entertainment, especially if they're writers or directors or whatever, they're job is to get a reaction out of you and that's what he did 
He got a reaction out of you when he did the Monkey Con and Sally romance in the middle of the Iron Dominion arc. And by knowing he got that reaction out of you, and by knowing that you were going to probably want him to find a way to end it and get Sonic and Sally back on the same page, he went and put that voting poll up, despite the fact that, you know, he already knew what everybody's decision was going to be, and he probably already had it pinned in and ready to go, you know. You know, his job was to get a reaction, and that's what he did. End of story. End of story. No matter how much you may want to spin it, that's a fact. That is the fact. End of story. End of story. But yeah, in closing, I will say this. The Monkey Con Sally Romance. I will say this. In closing, you know, the Monkey Con Sally Romance. Yes, it was cute for what it was. I'm not going to deny that. Yes, it did make us wonder, like, okay, what's going on here? But I think we all knew, we all knew that it was probably only going to be for the story, you know, period. That it was only going to be for the Iron Dominion overarching story, uh, period. I think we all knew that. I think we all knew that. So, long story short, again, I know I just said that, but long story short, you know, we... You know, when we look back at the Iron Dominion arc, we look back at the history of Archie Sonic during the Ian Flynn run, you know, we can honestly say that if there's one thing we can give him credit for, it's basically testing the waters, not just what certain characters and putting them in certain positions that you wouldn't think they'd be put in or scenarios they'd be put in, but also by testing the waters with the fans because him being a fan himself, you know, he realizes, you know, you know, he realizes you know, fans have specific favoritisms towards certain characters, ships, and all that. You know, so you got to give him, you know, credit, you know, for basically being a fellow fan and realizing how do I get a reaction out of my fellow fans? Oh, I know, I'll do this as a one-shot romance, make it look like it could be permanent, but go in the direction I know fans are going to probably want me to go in anyway, but... Just to, just to try to throw them off a little bit, make them uncertain, I'll put this little poll in there. And that's what he did. I mean, there's a lot of people in Ian Flynn's position in past, and you know, in entertainment of the past that have done these kind of things, knowing fans are going to go in one direction, and they've already got things planned out for that direction anyway. So, again, as cute and as doable as it was for the story, it was only meant for this story and this story alone. Just like I mentioned with the Saved by the Bell romances in Hawaiian style and other, you know, movies and shows and stuff that have done something similar. It's only meant for this story and this story alone. Nothing, nothing more. But let me know what you guys just think down below in the comments as well, excuse me, as well as in the live chat during the premiere. I do apologize if I ramble a little bit. I'm doing this before work. But give me your thoughts. Love to hear from each and every one of you on it. And until next time, guys, I will talk to you all later. You will get an audio podcast version of this, hopefully later on, at BW Roses Discussions Podcast and all your favorite audio podcast locations except for Pandora. But guys, let me know what your thoughts are. How did you feel about the Monkey Con Sally romance when you first thought, started to see it bloom midway through the Iron Dominion arc? And what was your reaction when it finally ended? Did you have the same reaction Chrono Hero did? Or was yours a little bit more different? Let me know down below in the comments. And until next time, guys, 